about you. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a real praise. What an awesome, what an awesome message. What an awesome message. God is in this place. Come on, can't you feel his presence? Oh my God. He's everywhere at the same time. God bless you. I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. 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 Wow. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. I want to uh, commend our mind team. Amen. It was just awesome. Had some technical difficulties and they could hear the music in their spirit. And I, I'm telling you, come on, come on. Amen. My God, I did, my God bless. That blessed me so, bless me so. Ah, oh, man. I got a little echo here and um, it, it makes me want to hoot. So you got to take the reverb off me. And uh, we've had some exciting times. God spoke to me. I guess about three months ago, and he says, we're supposed to come out of this pandemic far greater than we were. Amen. That we were not supposed to get wiped out. And I believe if God allowed you to get through by whatever means you've gotten through, amen, because he still had plans for you. And so don't get caught up in what has happened. It's simply time for your next uh, I was thinking about the message and my little grandbaby, I don't know where she is, she'll steal your heart anyway. Um, Paige ran up to me and hugged me and she was so shy and cute. She, she likes, she want to be a woman. She ain't but four, five. And I said to myself, oh my God, where would my grandbaby be if she gets the message that God is giving this day. Come on, give the Lord a real praise. Uh, amen. I mean, it's not too late for anyone, but if I had known then what I know now, oh, how much different my life would have been. Amen. We do, we do a lot of praying, and God says, you need to do more and pray. Amen. And so I want to I I just share with you today. I hope you have ears to hear. Amen. I was talking to a preacher the other day. I said, we, we were teaching what we were taught without knowing there possibly could have been more. You know, and we pass it on that we don't spend time with God. Then God cannot unveil any other truths. We just repeat the truths told one young man he had three years of pastoral experience and 20 years of rehearsal simply meaning you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again and you got it down packed but we need to hear God we need to hear God's voice your, your hope only thing that can happen or whatever's going to happen to you is your ability to hear God and if you can't hear God then God cannot get to you and so I am so concerned. I pray that I haven't been in a way or you haven't substituted me for hearing God. Amen. That you learn to hear God because it's our season. The world is looking for God and he's housed inside of us. And so I just want to share that with you. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's because I'm turning 50 that I'm getting so sentimental by my little grandbabies. But um, amen. I'm glad her daddy spent a whole lot of money so she don't come to Big Daddy. So that she probably just robbed me. Amen. I, I, uh, I have to start with my assignment. Amen. And my assignment is to teach that Christianity is more than just another religion. You know, life is determined how you perceive it. If you perceive Christianity as just another religion, and you've chosen this one because you like it, then you're going to miss it. Christianity is a way of life based on a personal, trusting relationship in Jesus Christ through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How you perceive a thing, how you perceive a thing 
It's so important, you know. Uh, I don't care where you are or what you have. What really matters is how do you perceive it because it return how you benefit from it. And so if you're going to go where we're going and a lot of folk are not and we will leave them behind, amen, is that you have to learn to think outside of the box. Amen. We got to think if Christianity is not a religion, what is it and who participate in it? First of all, you have to think outside. We are more than just human beings. We are spirit beings living and expressing ourselves in and through a physical body. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm trying to see you. But right now you're covered with your body. Come on, you ain't get you to miss that. You missed that. Amen. You don't know a person till you know their spirit. We are spirit beings creating the image and the likeness of God. And the life that we now live in the flesh, we live by the power of God. Let me give you a scripture and then I'm going to jump into my message. He says, Paul says in Romans, excuse me, in Galatians 2 and 20, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live and yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. I, I was praying and I was saying, God, after the conference, how, what, where, where do I go from here? He said, the same place that I sent you. And so I want to talk from this subject, if you join me. Born to create. Born to create. Every human being was originally born to create. I need some foundation for that. Look at your neighbor and say, you are born to create. And if you don't mind me getting in your business, what have you created lately? <laughs> Over in Ephesians 4 and 11, he said, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the maturing or perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. To the edifying of I wonder, have someone perfected you yet? That you know who you are in Christ. A foundational scripture, uh, several of the foundational scripture, to make sure you know you were born to create. It's come from Genesis, the first chapter, I'm going to lift the 26th verse and a couple of following verses. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Can I read it this way? Be productive and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. The commandment of the Lord to those who we made in his image and his likeness. God created us to be creative. And we haven't taught people how to create life. Amen. How to create life. I'm, I'm having some amazing, amazing, amazing time. I, was, I went to the mall with my wife the other day and I saw this shirt I wanted and I didn't know I was in the junior section. <laughs> and I said, I want this one right here. She said, well, sir, I hate to tell you you in the junior section, you probably need to go to the big and tall. And uh, 
I said, I don't want to go to the big and tall. I want this shirt right here. She said, well, I, I don't think it's going to fit. I said, I really don't care what you think. I just want to know, can I get it? She said, well, sir, I want to help you. But I, don't I said, I'll tell you what, show me the fitting room. I went in the fitting room and I put it on. I said, I'll take three. <laughs> because I'm creating, I shot out of the book. I'm creating the life I want. Amen. I want to tell you, you go to the old man's section. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So it's so important. It's so important that we that we get here, that we understand this here. Amen. Uh, the Bible says it's this way. Can y'all can I take my time? Amen. I tried to sit out your way and do anything until I got a chance to preach. But in Mark 4 and 26, a couple of verses, he says, and he said, so is the kingdom of God. This is a comparison. It's a revelation, but it's a comparison to something that you cannot see, but it tells us how it operates, even though you cannot see it. He said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast a seed into the ground. He didn't say it is as if, he says, as if it is, so is in process the kingdom of heaven. He says, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. There are some things we don't know how they are coming. He says, but that's the way the kingdom works. You can't know everything about how everything comes to pass. He said, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, and then the ear, and after that, the full corn in the ear. He's really saying that faith or the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God operates through faith, is such as, such as. It is not this, but since you can't see it, trust in its process and you can produce in your life. And that's why I want to say to you that you're born. You're born to create. You're born, you're born to create. So I, I need you to walk with me because I need to share with you now, how do I create? I remember a time when I used to work. My man, everything is back then. <laughs> Amen. I used to work for Christ, Lord. And we would work six days. No offense, Brother Miller. We worked six, seven months and they would lay us off for five or seven. And I'm like, I can't get ahead like this. As soon as I get started, then I'm laid off again. And then I, I got to make up for all the stuff I miss when I go back and I'm right back in the same cycle. And uh, yeah, then the Lord called me to preach. And I said, there's got to be a better way. He said, if you trust me, I'll take care of you. Amen. So I, I haven't hit a clock since 1979. November the 1st, but come on, hit the, hit, tell the Lord, say, you got to create your own life. And so here we are, we've been taught to depend on others to provide for us, and the world would not give us enough to build the kingdom. Or to fully enjoy yourself. And so I need to share with you, how do you build? You build through faith. And faith operates in your spirit man. And I want to walk to it. And you got to understand that it's a part of your thinking. It's a part of your thinking. Oh my God. It's okay. All right. Yeah, because I was going to be real cool today. I had my black crew neck with my little necklace. I was going to bust up in here. Pastor had already told me, you look like your son. I said, it's exactly... How I want to look. So, and then she said, oh, this is uh, uh, cancer awareness. And I said, oh, shoot. I got to put on a pink shirt. Glory to God. Amen. So, amen. I'm going to break out next week. <laughs> Jesus says something through his word that if you have ears to hear, it's more than what you see. Proverbs 23 and 7, the eight clause, he said, for as he thinketh in his heart, 
so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And, and for years, I always try to think, thinking about my heart. But he's not talking because now we're in the kingdom. And the kingdom doesn't operate from your vascular heart. He says, as he thinketh and perceives in his imagination, so is he. So whatever I see in my imagination becomes what I am or who I am or what I can create. This is okay. So anybody want to be blessed? All right. We're trying to make you, we're trying to make you your own boss. Okay. You're trying to make you your own boss. And it don't have to be money. You can just get happy. Amen. Amen. You could be like the uh, the mind team, the music can go off in your life and you still got your role. Because <laughs> you're living from the inside out. I used to, and so he says in Proverbs 24, uh, 4 and 23, he says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Now let me put my interpretation in there. This is a Jones special. Keep thy imagination with all diligence for out of it, your imaginations, are the issues of life. It's the issues of life. I know folk who are worried about being an old maid and they're already older than the maid. And you say, well, how do you say that? Because of their thinking. They see themselves as an old maid. They haven't reached the age of an old maid, but they like, it's like the children of either Israel who saw themselves as grasshoppers. In their own eyes. Okay, let me, let me, let me. I, I, I want to apologize for not knowing how to develop you. That your life would be a whole lot greater had you known then what we know. Unless you just outright lazy. Some folk would rather have pity than to have victory. They need that kind of stuff. So let me walk on in here like I want to. I want you to hear me and hear me well. The origin or the start or the beginning of all things is thought. Everything in your life starts with a thought. And if you are going to be victorious in life, you have to start with guarding your Thoughts, guarding your thoughts because thoughts have a way of producing because you were born to create. We create, we create by faith when we have God as our assistance, but our thoughts create just being a human spirit. Whatever direction your mind goes, your life come on now I wish I had somebody whatever direction your mind goes your life will follow it's amazing to me how many folk ain't got back to church but they go to work into the mall into the grocery store to the restaurants to the airports come on now but when it comes <laughs> to getting amongst these contagious saints, they get godly wisdom. But it's not their fault, it's their mind. They didn't guard their mind. Now I need to tell you something. Many folk don't understand faith the Bible says four times, the just shall live by faith, but faith without a desire is wasted faith. You, you got to, you, if you're going to create something, if you're going to create something, oh my God, you, you create it by faith because God gives us his faith because his faith is really nothing but his thoughts and every thought has a product. My God, I feel like so, so we create by faith. Watch this now. Is this okay? I know a lot of you don't go to Bible class. But that's okay. If you can live without it, that's okay. 
Amen. My wife asked me the other one, said, do you read your Bible? I said, what? <laughs> I know you read all these other books. I said, ain't no book like my book. You know what I'm saying? But okay, since you need to ask, all right. Yes, ma'am, I read my Bible. Can't you tell? I'm up every morning spending time with God. Can't you tell? What you getting off Facebook? Okay, but anyway. I don't know where that came from. I thought I was on an uprising. She tells me, you need Jesus. You need to read your Bible. Okay. Watch this now. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Wow, I need you to hear this. I'm going to get to where I'm going. And I hope you follow me. But I need to lay the foundation. And I'm really trying to get you beyond your excuses. Hebrews 11 one says, now faith, God's thoughts revealed unto us, is the substance of things desired, hoped for. Hope is a, a desire held in an expectation with the belief it will come to pass. So faith is the substance, or faith is God revealed word, or the God's revealed word is the substance of things hoped for and it's evidence of things not seen, can I say yet? By it, the elders obtain a good report for their conduct. Through faith, we understand, through God's revealed revelation, that the world were framed or brought into being by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Put a pen right there. Because some stuff that is about to happen in your life, if you get this, will not come from what is already seen. Or already present. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. If you really get this, you, look at your neighbor say, you're rich and you may not even know it. I feel like preaching. Society, society want to hold you back and hold you limited. I remember they was fighting trying to get uh, fifteen uh, dollars an hour uh, minimum wage, and, and they said they couldn't do it. They, the best they could do is twelve, and they'll give you that three years from now. But when the economy shut down, and the folk figured out that they can't make money without you. I was driving up to the, to the hamburger joint the other day, $18 an hour and $2,000 signing bonus. <laughs> I said, you see, they were playing on your ignorance. I'm, I'm getting out there, I'm getting out there. But touch the neighbor say, I'm about to create my own world. I'm about to create my own world. And so here we are, here we are. Watch what this it says. <laughs> James says it this way, and I'm afraid that many of us are guilty because we talk about faith, but we, have, we don't use faith. James says in one, James 1 and 22, he says, Be ye doers of the thoughts of God or the word of God and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. He, he seems to be implying, Elder Gardner, that there's something you're supposed to do with the word because everything is created from the word. And when God stepped out on nothing, it was his word that he created from. And words are nothing but verbal thoughts. So it says, I, 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 I can do something if I'm not afraid to say something. <laughs> can, I, can I keep preaching like this? If, if I run you too long, you can be excused. <laughs> what is faith? Faith is the connecting power into the, into the spirit realm. Faith is the connecting power into the spirit realm, which links us with God and make him become a tangible reality to the sense ram perception of a person 
I said a whole lot. I hope you got time to go back and get it. Faith is the basic ingredient to begin a relationship with God. <laughs> you see, I remember when I first came to Jesus, the deacons voted me in. I don't know what they ju judged by. They said, Brother Hoff, Brother so, Brother Pastor, you know, after hearing the testimony, we so moved. <laughs> brother here would be, become a, 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 a member of our church, have all rights and privileges as so many of us. What is the question? How do you say? Eyes have it. You in. I'm in what? But if you're talking about life, my God, I feel like preaching. Are you with me here? He says, faith is the thing, faith is thinking based on God's thoughts. I'm coming. Y'all just got to wait on me. We are creative beings. We were created to create. Remember I said earlier, oh my God, well man, I'm going I'm to jump over there with you. I'm going I'm to forget that clock. I told, I told Lady T when she came down, she was so rough. I said, you should have just dropped the mic and walked off. Amen. Some emphasis on let know you mean it with all your heart. <laughs> Are you still there? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you going to do with all this? Please just don't tell Bishop you enjoyed him. Because that means you remain the same. We are creative beings. We were created to create. And the question is, what have you created lately? Well, Bishop, I can't tell you that because I don't know how to create biblically. And I'm blaming you, Bishop, because you didn't teach me how to create Biblically, so, well, I'm here, I'm back. How do we create? Question. By the law of faith. How do we create? By the law of faith. I know people who have bona fide faith. You with me? No doubt in my mind but they don't know what to do with it. Dominique, can you come here a minute? I'm gonna give you this hundred dollars if you promise never to spend it. So what good is it if you can't spend it? It's no good. I might as well keep it, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take the restrictions off okay. never spending it but just as God gives us faith we must determine how we're going to spend it there are folks sitting up here with faith and haven't figured out any way to spend it because if you can't spend it it ain't worth the paper so we got, you know, we got things and we worried about somebody else financing the kingdom and the visions of God. God said, because we haven't taught people how to create. Taught you how to create. We're trying to pray for you to get a job. And it's nothing wrong with a job. But if you're going to get a job, uh, be a contractor. So you can get more benefits. I, the law of faith. We create by faith. Faith is another way of saying we create by thoughts. And in particular, God's thoughts. I said this Friday night, I said there are three spirit beings that has the ability to create. And that's God as a spirit being, Satan as a spirit being, and you as a human spirit. The three spirits who are 
able by being a spirit able to create I say but what happens is the folk who don't want to partner with God or partner with Satan becomes atheists and they still able to create with their human spirit just not as much and those of us those of them that are in the world they're they're partnering with Satan and creating extraordinary things because Satan has power greater than their power and when they come together they're able to create all kind of crazy stuff if you ever been in the world you know what I mean and then there are those who have enough sense to partner with God <laughs> and with God's power it's like it's like it's like what Paul says over there in Ephesians 3 and 20. He is able unto him that is able to give you exceeding and abundantly more than you can ask or think. It's because he said through the power which is God that now worketh in you. So no matter what you say about me, I'm more than a conqueror. Through Christ, come on here now. Just strengthen me. Look at your neighbor and point and say, you more than a conqueror. Through Christ, the strength, you just got to see yourself that way. You can't get beyond the perception you have. Can I ask this question? And you respond without an excuse. Would all the classy ladies stand up? The classy ladies. That's what I'm talking about. All high caliber women remain standing. Come on. <laughs> see, it's very important how you see yourself. Because if you don't know how you see yourself, someone else will see you away. And you don't want to not perceive yourself because someone will be envious and make you less than what you are. Um, thank you, thank you, lovely ladies. When I was coming up as a kid in church, when the rent would do, they would have all the ladies stand up and they said, who'll pay a dollar for this sister to sit down? And that's how we raised the rent, but I didn't do that. I wasn't trying to. Them old deacon said, well, I'm gonna sit down five of them. You, you. Just, just the game they play. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. no. It's, it's very important. You can't let society and no one else tell you who you are. You got to hear what God says. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> I got I to gotta hurry up and shut up. But I'm serious. Amen. Said so we're on our way, but only people who can create can keep up when people you you got to create stuff out of bad situation you you know and when I say create it may not but just creating high self-esteem creating the right disposition creating joy how do you do but how do you create joy when you're living with hell change the way you think about hell It'll work. Change. Say, how do you change the way you think about hell when you're living in hell? Here's how you do it. I guess you shouldn't have asked me. I can handle hell because I got grace on me. I got God's ability to handle this situation would normally kill somebody else, but I'm made for it. I'm, that's just the way I see it. That's the way I see it. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? I'm still with me. I'm still with me. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Woo! How do we create? We create through thoughts. Satan knows that thoughts are creative. God knows thoughts are creative. And you should know thoughts are creative. If I would look at your life and you would look at your life, you would discover that your life mirrors your thinking. Your life 
is really a reflection of how you process thoughts. Are you still with me? And so if you don't like what you see, don't try to change it until you change the way you think. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost. And so here we are. God says, share this with you. Is there anybody who wants something or needs to create something? The Bible says four times that the just shall live by faith. If I'm going to live, then I got to have something to live by or live with. So can I say it this way? The just shall live by creating or by the creative faith in their life. I live by the revealed thoughts of God that I create. Are y'all still with me? Look at your neighbor and say, catch him, catch him. He's unglued right now. And the train is going to pull off soon. And I would hate for you to be on the curve. Are you listening? Amen. God has placed it in us. Placed it in us. Are you still? So here, here, here we go. The law of faith. James said, be doer of the word and not hearers only. Be doers of faith and not hearers only. So how do I do faith? I do faith by the process of faith. And any faith I don't process is dead faith. Are you with me? So here's the process of faith. Brother Steve, can I use you? You look like a guy ready to do something. Just ain't figured out how to do it yet. You look like you should be successful. You bumped at several things that you thought would make you successful. Are you still with me? And do you still desire to be successful? Is there any particular area that you, can you bring him a mic? I will take this time so those who are not on the bus can get on the bus, <laughs> on the train. What is it that you want to do or that you believe you should be able to do that you haven't been able to do it yet? Be successful in finances, running my own business. Okay, can I say this? He said to be successful in finances and have my own business. I discovered that God never answers vague prayers. You know, so say, Lord, I need a husband. Just send me one. I'm tired of waiting. <laughs> Let him find me. Which one? What kind do you want to find? And what will he get? No, God doesn't deal with that because what he's wanting us to understand, I can't activate your creativity until you actually know what it is that you want to do. And then you do the process of faith and your faith will make what you want. So I need thoughts. Now let's go at this again. You said you want to provide and you want to do a business. What kind of business? Moving business. You want you mean two two brothers in a truck? Transportation services. Okay. Now you now you start jumping. You, you know. Moving and transportation services. Moving and transportation services. Okay. Okay. You with me? So like two brothers in a truck. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you make a lot of money out of that? Yes. How about ten brothers and five trucks? We'll see you there. Why would you limit yourself to two brothers and a truck and you being one of the brothers? Because God's going to bless you with what you can believe. All things are possible to him that believe. Since I can believe and I don't have to perform it or make it, why not believe for more than I can produce? Because if I can produce it, I don't need a God. So if you really want to live large, you need more than a truck and two brothers or a truck and a brother. You need five trucks and ten brothers. And it might make it sense, you know what I'm saying? You know, I know people praying for a raise. If I could just get a $2 raise, $2. You mean 
$80 is holding your life back. $80 a week, $40 a... No, no, no. Your vision is too small. You will get mad when we take up Impact Sunday because you work too hard for it. But unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above, watch this, all you can ask or think. And so God says, my hands are tied. I'm limited to your thinking and your asking. And if I bless you, you still be crying. As soon as you get your truck in the do, you're going to want more. Because you got to pay for the truck. <laughs> Are you with me? I'm just trying to paint a picture. Amen. Trying to paint a picture. That's all I'm trying to say. And so, here is where we get caught. And I've been there. I depend on me. And I give God the credit. And I won't do anything that I don't think I can accomplish. Even though I'm going to give God the credit. I don't want him to take my failure. Come on. So I limit yes. what I decree. Right so I won't shame God, which is a lie from hell. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm just trying to get you to see. Yeah. What's holding you back? My thoughts. Oh, you done, you, you done graduated. You done. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a praise right there. You got you to gotta be able to believe that where I'm going, the only thing that's holding me back is my thoughts. Because I was born to create. Let me make it sense. Let me make it sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That make sense? I got one more. You ever leave it alone? Come here, daughter. What you? Racine, come here. Racine been hooking it up. Racine want to be married. She do. And my class is almost over and she's, <laughs> and she's still begging for somebody to pray for her so I, just, I just got through teaching how you can create she thought that she could get this guy with a red head and I ain't mad at you because you look good with it you know I looked at you twice when you fell up in here but people say I want to be found but you need to turn on your light. So how do I turn on my light? I see myself in the spirit. I had an envision of being married to become a reality in my man, in my manhood or in my inner man until it attracts what I need. That's, that's how it works. That's, that's, that's just how it works. That's just how it works. What kind of man are you looking for? From me? Uh, you're not trying to get one for your daughter, are you? I'm looking for somebody that's going to love me like Christ loved the church. Okay. And how's that? Unconditionally. Unconditionally. And, and, and take me for all the, for who I am, and it's going to love me more than I've ever been loved before. Right, 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 right. <laughs> what does that look like? Um, I guess, um, the sky's the limit because I want the best because I feel like I'm the best and I know I am. So. You know you're the best. I know I am. Do you see yourself the best? Oh, I see myself the best. And so where's the shelf that the guy's sitting on? I don't know, but I'm waiting for him. <laughs> I'm waiting for him. So, so my, lesson, my lesson that you don't get it is that before you, God can give it to you, you have to create it. Okay. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Because he said the just shall live by faith. And so what you have is a desire. And you feel like you're worthy of the desire. But it don't come from worthiness. It comes from faith. You see what I'm saying? There's some sisters, got some fellas looking real good. And he's like, I don't know how they got that. 
and you looking at yourself as gorgeous as you are, you step in the mirror and say, talk back, mirror. And the mirror be saying, you look good, girl, you look good, girl. And you bust out, but you ain't created nothing. That's what I'm trying to get you. And then we blame God for not showing up. After all of our faithfulness and all of our going to church. And then we mad with God. And God says, I created you to create. And your pastors haven't taught you how to create. You see? You with me? And so I need you to go and create what you want. In the spirit. I want a man 6'2". You see? Got to weigh at least 220 pounds to handle me. <laughs> can you see it? Yes, I can. What do you look like? Is it light skin, dark skin? Do you have nappy hair or curly hair? Oh. Well, my bishop said we, we gotta we gotta say what we want. So I would like a chocolate man. Oh, you want a? Ch- <laughs> I mean, if I want to, you, know, you, you like them dark and chocolate, huh? I like, a, I like them dark and chocolate. Come on now. Okay. Did you hear her, Jesus? <laughs> Did you hear? You can get that mic back. I ain't gonna mess with you. I, I think you already done made your cake. Glory to God. You putting ice in it. But here's what I'm saying. And I, I know I'm taking a lot of time. It sounds like foolishness. It's because it's been kept from us. Here is what the law of faith operates like this. You have to. You have to get a clear cut. Objective. Or desire. Or goal clear-cut through envisioning. Steve's going to go home and still envision two brothers in a truck named Duff. <laughs> He's going to go home. What's your wife's name again? Uh, Charmaine. We about to go. <laughs> we about to go to Beverly Hills, baby. Because I seen Ten brothers in five trucks. And I'm using my faith and God is waiting on me. So you got this clear and you have to look at it until you can conceive it in your spirit. The Long Academy didn't get here to Detroit because Miller showed up. Miller saw the Long Academy before he got to Detroit. He just allow God to produce it in Detroit. And if he go to another city, because they company keep sending him to other city, he going to create another line of company because it's in the spirit. Oh, Are you still with me? And because he has vision, he's, he's attracting finance. That's how God works. And, and so this is what I'm trying to say. We haven't taught you. We haven't taught you. There's some people say, Bishop, I need to fix my life. I know I'm saved, I've been born again, I'm full of the Holy Ghost, I speak with other tongues, but I mean and I cuss a lot. Don't, don't, don't. You can't say amen, you can say ouch. Ouch. But, but, but the problem is, it's not that you're not saved, it's not that you're not born of fact. It's not that you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. It's your thoughts that got you cussing. So you got to change your thoughts in order to change your disposition. And so the second thing you need, you need a burning desire. A burning desire. And I was asking God the other day, I said, why people won't come back to church? He said, because they don't have a burning desire to come and praise me collectively. I mean, you, you got to, it's like when it's a burning desire, you just can't be yourself until it happens. I want this so bad. It's like the sister telling me to go to the big and tall shop. This is the shirt I want. She said, well, sir, I'm trying to be nice. You in the junior department, they fit different. I said, I understand. But this is the shirt I want. Well, she was trying to say, you got too much gut. But you see, gut is what's in right now. You know what I'm saying? They call it a playground. God is what's in. You see what I'm saying? 
Do you know how many people without guts these days? Why trip over gut? Gut is in. I want this shirt. She's trying to say, I'm trying to serve you. I'm saying, you're trying to get in my way. That's what you're trying. Because I see this thing. I see it. Thirdly, are you still, I hope this, my humor has not messed you up. Because you're going to leave here and you got to know you were born to create. The problem is you didn't know how to create. And God says he's able to, to do exceeding, abundant, above all you can ask or think. Ask or think through the power that now worketh in you. So there's no excuse. He said, I put it in you. The same Holy Spirit that when I stepped out on nothing and spoke, the Holy Spirit produced my vision. And because you're in my image, he will produce your vision if you will surrender and just do as I say. With faith. And so you got to have a burning desire and then you got to pray for assurance or confidence. You got to know, you got to know sink or swim, it's going to be mine. That all things going to work together for my good. I got confidence. I got affirmation from God. I got before God until I'm clear on the thoughts that I'm dealing with. Are you still with me? And you get up and you have boldness. I know he ain't ready yet. Steve, can you come back here for a minute? You know, this is not an overnight thing. This is, this, this, this is a transformation or a renewing of how you previously thought. But we're going to act like you've been doing it for a minute. Can you tell us what kind of business you're going to have? It's on. Yeah, bring it on up. There you go. Um, provide moving services for, mm -hmm. you know, all over the you know, Everywhere. local area. Yeah, okay. And transportation services. And, mm -hmm. Local area. And? And grow the business. And? Successful fund. And? Let me help Maybe you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Because you ain't got it yet. I'm going to start a business, a truck moving business. And I see five trucks and ten men. And it's soon to come to pass. And we're going to move regionally. And then we're going to go nationally. You can't follow what I'm saying? Now, you can't say that if you can't see that. But you can't look around a whole lot of stuff and say nothing. You see, because you got to be convinced in your heart. And you got to see it clear. I, I want five. I want five. Five. I, uh, the devil had me a few months back. I guess I can share this testimony. I have a large insurance policy and because uh, I couldn't trust co-pastor with the people if I die. Right, right. And so the devil said, you know what? I said, what, Mr. Devil? He said, you know, when you turn 78, your insurance policy gone. I said, oh, that means I got eight years to protect me. Then I won't be able to cover no more. So I need to do something. And then God said, shut up. I said, well, it means you got eight years to outdo the policy. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can live on to 90. Come on. <laughs> but I had to see it. I had to see it. You see what I'm saying? Because we put these little mechanisms in place when we depend depending on ourselves. And God says, I am your source. I am your source. I'll give you revelation. I'll give you understanding if you trust me. Now, that's don't come to church. Create a relationship. And I'm telling you, man, if that's what you can see, and you can get past whatever you've been bound by. Yeah. That's good, that's good. I just want the ties. <laughs> the last point and I'm done. Pastor Matthew, you're going to have to come get me. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I've been fighting the devil all day to get here. The last thing is you got to speak it. You got to speak it. If you can't say it, that means you're scared. You're more concerned about yourself and the criticism that if you don't succeed, that you're afraid to say what God has given you the ability to create first 
in your spirit man through envision. But if you can't say it or decree it, you can't receive it. I remember so, and I don't know if you remember, uh, Brother Miller, when you come say, I, I want to create a line of kind. He just said, he had no truck, no kids. You know, he had a son, but he wasn't about ready to cut grass. Because Marie wasn't going to let him cut at that moment. But he just watched God, his words, and his vision. And what he was doing, if I could steal your testimony, he used the law and economy to help black young men and ladies learn how to create wealth. He needed a purpose to bring them in and teach them character and responsibility and know-how. And everybody think it's the law and economy. The law ain't nothing. They're cutting it for free. But I got an opportunity to pour into people's lives. What God has given me. Until they build character. Until they become successful. Contributing humans in life. And my little grandbaby ran up on me. With a little grown self. I said oh if I could teach her how to create. With her mind. Based on the thoughts of God. Oh what the lineage. Would soon look like. Come on, let's give our bishop a hand. Come on, you could do better than that all over the room. Online, come on, send some hearts up, send some likes up. Let's clap our hands. Matter of fact, let's stand to our feet all over the room. Let's just honor the Lord right now for the word that came through our leaders. While we're standing, the bishop talked and he said, be doers. Everybody say, I'm a doer. Come on, say it again like you mean and say, I'm a doer. Oh, I think it only hurts to say it one more time. Say, I'm a doer. Come on, that's good, that's good. But, but I, I think it fits the moment before we move, while we're, just, while we're right here. Let's take a moment, let's close our eyes and let the Holy Spirit begin to impress upon our mind a vision in some area of our lives. We gotta be doers, not hearers only. And I think one of the biggest attacks is that we get, we get in the moment where we leave the moment and we never do. So let's take a moment and just see something. Oh, see something. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you clarity of vision in an area in your life. You pick the area. Bishop said that God created us to be creative. And as we begin to look in our spirit, the Holy Spirit will begin to paint through our mind, the ability to see. And you can begin to even allow him to let your faith even begin to shape and to send suggestion and send preference. He says, hope is a desire held in expectation with the belief that it will come to pass. What do you see? Take the time, see. See yourself. Whether it's a vision for your health, a vision for your emotions, a vision for your marriage, a vision for your business, a vision for your home, a vision for your children, a vision for your life, a vision for the car you drive, a vision for the impact that you will have. See it. See it. Get as, as clear as you possibly can. Come on, we'll take about 30 more seconds in seeing the process of faith. We got to see it. Gotta see it. See it. See it. And while you're looking at it, I need you to talk to yourself for a moment and you're thinking and let yourself know that by faith, there is no reason you cannot obtain it. The Bible says with God, all things are possible. God has created us to be creative. So I need you to tell yourself, I will have it. Begin to speak to that thing. You will manifest. Come on, talk, talk out of your mouth to talk to that thing. You will, you will come to pass. I will walk in you. I will walk in, you in, in the reality of your existence in the natural realm. However you see it, 
Let's talk to it. You're going to talk to it even after you leave here today, if you can keep it. Talk to it until you get a burning desire. Until you become convinced, even in your mind, based on faith, that you can obtain it. And I want to tell you now, while you're looking at it and you're talking prayerfully in obedience, that the enemy is going to try to give you thoughts contrary to its reality that it's coming. And you're going to speak back to it with the thoughts of faith that you have right now, that I shall see it. The Bible says, he who began a good work is faithful to complete that work, to perform that work. I will see it. And I'm going to give you a charge that for the next seven days, that you'll put it in your prayer every night. You'll see it clearly every night and you'll speak to it every night. Make time to talk to it every night. And I speak by faith in accord to the process of faith given by our bishop. You'll get an assurance. I speak that an assurance shall come in your seven days of obedience. You will get an assurance in your spirit. And you'll have an assurance, a confidence. You'll have proof. You'll have a title deed that it's coming to pass. From that day forth, when you know that you know, you'll begin to speak about it with confidence to those around you and you'll begin to act on it as because you already have the plans, you already have the vision. Now I'm just putting the pieces together. It is so. In Jesus' name, it's the process of faith. If you can agree with that, can you put your hands together right now all over the room? so good so good so good to hear the the claps of the people of God in person all come on, put your hands together louder come on make the enemy mad that you're clapping with faith and confidence so again as we prepare to be dismissed a couple things we will do the first thing I want you to now again commit to yourself seven days I will make sure I take some time come on within yourself seven days I'm gonna take some time to to see it to pray on it, to speak it. And I'm going to start decreeing. I'll get my assurance. Let me see by a show of hands, seven days. Can I see by a show of hands, seven days? That's good, that's good, that's good. Lastly, before we go, if there be someone in the house who's not saved, you've never given your life to God, we want to give you the opportunity to help us, help you, by just initiating and helping introduce you to the one we call our Lord and Savior. The one who gives us the ability to have faith, and the one who connects us from the spiritual realm to the natural realm. If there be one that's not saved, never giving your life to God. We didn't ask had you gone to church, but you've never given your life to God. If you're here, will you come forward now? And we'll walk you through the process of just giving your life to God and introducing you to the one who holds the key to all things. Secondly and lastly, if you're here and you don't have a church home, a place where you can call home, a family of faith people who can pray with you agree with you worship with you join their faith with your faith who you know will have your back in hard times and who you can call on or assist when they need if you don't have a family we'd love to be your family here at the fountain and our bishop and our pastor would love to be your leaders if that's anyone can you come forward now if that anyone you don't have a church home so I take it we're all family there's someone watching online just simply type sound oh clap it up we have someone coming y'all clap it up for her as she comes God bless you. God bless you. For those watching online as we prepare to release you, again, if you would like to give your life to Christ, just simply type salvation in the comments and we'll have someone reach out to you. I'll clap it up for both of these young ladies. If you would like to be a part of our fellowship, to be a part of our family and connect with us as, as we focus on helping you get closer to God, just type in member, um, type in member or type in family in the chat, salvation or family in the chat. And we'll reach out to you to uh, connect with you to be a part of your walk with God. Fountain family, one more time. Can you clap it up for our sisters here as well as those by faith that we see coming? I'm excited. Anybody excited about their own future? Can you give God a praise for your own future? Can you give God a praise for the vision you just saw? I dare you take 10 seconds and praise God like you already know that what you see shall manifest. Come on, God is good. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, God bless you. Come on, you ladies may head that way, head that way. You may head that way. We'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. 
We'll take care of you. We're getting ready to dismiss. If you gotten in late and you didn't get a chance to give your tithes or your offering, you can come now and leave them on the altar. If you're watching online, you can give your tithes and your offering. If you got connected late, the information will come on the screen. But we just had an amazing time today. We thank God for our bishop, our leader. Clap it up for one more time, guys. God is so good. And it's time for us to, to dismiss. We're allowing those who gotten in late to pay their tithes and their offering. They can do so now. Fountain family, thank you so much for your, 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 your coming together to show support for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I see you guys out there all in your, your pink. You look wonderful. You look beautiful. Do me a favor. On your way out today, you don't got to touch anybody, but wave at somebody. Smile at somebody. Offer some words of encouragement. You never know how much your smile could do something for somebody else. And we're excited. Your compliment can go such a long way. And even if you don't get to that person, look around and ask the Holy Spirit, who should I pray for this week? And put, put somebody on your mind. Put somebody in your heart. And put somebody on your spirit. Send up a prayer to bless you. Your, your brother, your sister in Jesus' name. I'm just excited for the family. I see y'all coming back in the building. And then, come on, wasn't this an amazing service, y'all? Clap it up for that. God is so good. Let's stand to our feet and let's be prepared to be dismissed. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, cool. Amen, amen. All right, cool. Right now, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna dismiss our online and our audience, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We love y'all. We pray you enjoyed the service. Do us a favor, don't forget to like, share, send it to someone who you know needs to learn the process of faith. And if you can't think of anyone specifically, just simply share it right on your page right now. In Jesus' name, we will see you guys on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Can y'all clap it up for our online audience as we dismiss them today?